Welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. We are coming to you Saturday night, right after the Leafs just got filled by the Winnipeg Jets. 5-2. to 5-2 two. Two final. Not, uh, man. Keith didn't I'll look tell you happy. What. Keith looked fucking pissed at the end. They, of this. They, they didn't have it tonight, Chad, but I'll tell you what, right off the top here, here's what I'm going to say. Right off the top, dude, okay? What what happened when this game, what happened off the opening faceoff tonight? Opening faceoff, what happened? Pierre Engvall comes ripping down the fucking wing off the opening faceoff, rips it top shelf, knocks the water bottle fucking out of the water bottle. bottle, it, was, it, bottle. It, it, it was a glove pass. Okay, yeah, they called it back. They called it back. Glove pass. This happened like 30 seconds into the game, a minute yeah. into the game. I'm thinking, as soon as that, even though they called it back, I'm like, fuck, this this game's over. They're going to lose. Goose scored. Mm-hmm. Even though they called it back, I'm like, right away, I'm like, oh, fuck, is this what we, is this, is this how tonight's going to go? Yeah, it was foreshadowing right there. Oh, dude. Who's got a goal and they called it back? So they're like, not only are you going to lose, but this goal doesn't count. That's right. So right off the top, I'm like, oh boy, this is not good. This yeah. is not good. Yeah, I saw that. I thought you meant something happened on the draw mm-hmm. on the opening faceoff. But yeah, it was a glove pass. It deserved to be called back. But they just, like you said, they just didn't have it tonight. No, they did they not. They just didn't have it. This wasn't the same team. I thought Tuesday and Thursday, they looked great. They yeah, played this, really good hockey. They just uh, couldn't beat same. Hellebuck. No, like they they were lucky, like not lucky. I think they should have won both. They did win on on Thursday. I think they should have won both of those games. To be honest, I think they were the better team tonight. Winnipeg deserved to win. And he, but here's what pisses me off is that like I'm thinking hell about like I when I first turned on the game around seven or whatever, and I see that they're not playing Hellebuck, I'm like, what? The fuck? You, they're not playing Hellebuck. Are you nuts? This guy's fucking. You guys would have been dummy the last two games if it, if it wasn't for Hellebuck. So I'm thinking, okay, for the Leafs, the backups in. This should be a fucking not a cakewalk, but a hell of a lot. You play the way you did on Tuesday and Thursday, they would have won this game easily. I don't know. I I, I just I didn't like the whole team effort tonight. I don't no. know why. Boring I can't wait to boring fucking game. Yeah, it was like the worst game of all three. I can't wait to see what Keith says post game tonight like he's probably gonna he's not he wasn't even happy when they won the other night and no. we'll, and we'll, i'll get into this later but all right what do you want to do you want to go back to we'll touch on tonight we'll get more into tonight's game a little later you want to go right back to tuesday then yeah, we'll let's go, go thursday, back to then tuesday we'll, and we'll talk back about, to tonight we'll go back to tuesday and talk about tuesday night's game uh four three loss to the jets but like we said I thought the Leafs played very good on Tuesday night. Hellebuck was unreal. Oh, ridiculous. Tuesday and man. Thursday. Ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, like I – look, okay, the thing – this I was super excited for, for this three-game set. Like I'm like, okay, this is like you're playing with the big boys now. So let's, uh, let's see what's up. Like the next best team, I believe, in the division is rolling in. So here we go. Let's see what's up. Game maybe, one, maybe the best team in the division. Maybe we'll see. Lead slipping. I'll get to that later. But uh, my new thing on the podcast now is like, we'll get to that later. Yeah, I know. I said it like a hundred. We should change times the name of the podcast, and we'll get to that later. <laughs> we'll get to that later with Chad and Dale, and then yeah. we just never get to anything. We just yeah, say, no. we'll get to that later. We'll start to talk about it, and then just get to it later. <laughs> so okay. she came into the bedroom, and <laughs> well, you know what? We'll get to that later. But there might be a new segment in the works called We'll Get to That Later. We'll get to that later. Stay tuned. Not this week, but stay tuned anyway. in the future. Okay, so well, look, we man. will get to that later. <laughs> game game one on Tuesday against the Jets. I was super excited. Like I this is the most excited I've been so far because yeah. here we are at the halfway point. Like we're getting into the nitty-gritty here. There's gonna and, be more. They lost the two to Vancouver, but after the way they played in Edmonton, I was like, bring on the Jets. That's right. First, bring on the Jets. Yeah, exactly. Same here, man. First game back at home. I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's see what's up. Let's see what you really got. And I thought they played well. But here comes fucking Mr. Zach Hyman again. He opened the scoring in the series with an absolute sick goal. Remember, I texted you yeah. right after it happened. He just picked and and and, and, and rush. He drove and the and rush. He's he took the puck. He's like, I'm just I'm going right at it. He went right to Hellebuck, just kept going, put it up like beautiful goal by the mitts on this guy all of a sudden, Zach Hyman, and he keeps it going on a different he's just on a different yeah. planet. Well, right you know now. what? He kind of he kind of strikes me as the type of guy that would work hard in the offseason to get better. 
I don't know what it is about him. Just there's this thing about him. Yeah, I don't know what it is about him, but yeah, I think I Babcock think wasn't right about a lot of things, but man, he was right about Zach Hyman. That was that was like the second best thing of that game was Hyman's uh, like sick goal to open the scoring. But then, you know, here we go. Something very special happened next. <laughs> are we uh, are we going to go to just the tip? Oh my goodness! Yes, sir. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for just the tip. Perhaps play a little game called just the tip, just for a second, just to see how it feels. So, uh, do you want to do you want to set this one up for our listeners? Oh my! If anyone goodness. didn't see it, we got to be slow. You got to set this up nice. Look, this is not an easy tip by oh, any means. God. We were very worried about his wrist and is he going to be shooting the puck and he has not been shooting the puck we'll get to that later <laughs> okay <laughs> but <laughs> fucking the whole show's later <laughs> but so what's he doing all of a sudden now he's like oh he's pulling a little johnny toronto kind of shit he's going to the front of the net he's like all of a sudden he's not you know out on the out on the hash marks or whatever like in his normal spot where he would just be bombing them home He's going to the front of the net. And what happens here? Holy shit. This was like a behind the back tip. He tipped it behind his, he like stretched around. Eyes closed. Eyes closed, shot in the dark. He's just like, yeah, okay. Redirects it. No, redirect. What am I talking about? Tips it. Tips it. Don't say redirect. Please please edit, please edit that out. Please edit that out. But yeah, like that was, dude, that was insane for him to like be able to reach around like that and still yeah. get a still reach get around one. tip, a reach around, oh, tip. reach around like those that are, and still, still get one on it. Those are rare. Look, this is a very special, special thing oh. on the tip in Maple Leafs podcast. When must that like a mustache tip is a rare breed. No, <laughs> okay. is, you tip no, Simmons, Tavares, one of these guys, no problem. That's the what when, they do. A mustache tip is the rarest tip of all tips you could possibly find. So this was a very special one. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's like seeing a white owl. (laughs) It's out there. I think it's even I think it's even rarer than that. More rare. It's like one of those things that people tell you about, but you've never seen it. Yeah, that's right. Is there anything this guy can't do? Uh no. (laughs) There's not. (laughs) There's nothing. No. There's nothing he can't do. He can do everything. I don't know. Oh, anyway. it, like again, the rarest of all tips. I'm so glad we've got a mustache tip because these are super rare. I hope there'll be more in the future. The most special tip of all tips, the mustache tip. Wow. What a way to start the week. Yep. Oh. And we thought it was going to be a great game after that. Right. Great game, great week. But what happened? Well, they continued to play well until <laughs> mustache we- decides to kick it into his own net, into right. his own net. He starts doing karate kicks across. He's doing drop kicks off the top rope, and he decides to boot one in his own net. Yeah, that was a shitty play. Holy oh. hell! He just like, dude, I didn't know he. I don't was know that what he, I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know he was that flexible. He just hi yeah, oh, kick him off. <laughs> we just said two minutes ago. There's nothing he can't do. That's true. The way he kicked that, like that was a karate chop only by his leg. Hi yeah, catch. If we're being perfectly honest. It's a stupid fucking play. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck he was doing there. He like, kicks it in his own net, so boom. Just they let were it up. go. The goalie, you, the goalie's got it. Freddie's got it. It's going well, here's the way. thing. Hyman, and then fucking put your foot in the air and totally tip it the other way. Hyman, end-to-end rush, drives the net for the first goal. Austin with a rare mustache tip. It's 2 nothing lease. And then when he kicked it in, Austin kicks it in his own net for his second tip of the night. But this one doesn't count, unfortunately. But and then so he makes it two one by doing that. And so the Leafs, but the Leafs still have a two one lead. And then here we go. It just falls apart. So they blow a two one lead. And the Jets score a uh, couple goals. It's Jets lead three two after two. Um, what do you do? Matthew scores again late. Again, not shooting it. No. And they end up losing four three in regulation. So we go to. We go to Thursday night. Leafs are looking for a little redemption. They come out almost the exact same way they were playing oh, just Thursday night. Flying, oh, man. Looking them. so good. Oh, Team, 
just looking crisp, crisp passes. Like yeah. they're all over it. Breakaway fucking central. They probably had 10 breakaways on Hellebuck that yeah. game. And we couldn't will, bury it. We will get to this later on how the game ended. Oh, but hell. take note that they had Nylander had a breakaway. Hyman had a breakaway. Oh, dude. Engvall had a breakaway. They all went backhand. Goose. on their breakaway and they couldn't get it done but one man could get it done on his backhand okay so game well, you're not getting there we'll uh <laughs> we'll get to that later i was gonna say it but i'm trying to yeah yeah well it's a joke Dude, now we'll get, get to that soon we'll get to that soon. next we'll um, get to that in a short while which is still technically later but anyway yeah. look man game two i thought they were awesome i thought this was like this looked like the team that was playing in Edmonton, the, the three games in Edmonton. They looked great. Hellebuck was standing on his fucking head. The only, this game could have been, they could have been way up in this oh. game, but Hellebuck kept lo- it close. Some lucky things too. Yeah. Oh no, like, without a doubt. Um, Nylander had whacked it in midair and hit the crossbar. And Nylander I, was a tank on Thursday night. N- without a doubt. Look, yeah, he was all over. Probably the best game. And Keith said this too, probably his best game um this season and it, it was like he looked hungry for it like whatever i thought it was a great game by the least i thought they outplayed them i thought it was a good game back and forth hella buck was insane obviously like everyone who watched the game knew that was he, the goalie was on fucking fire i can't believe they even got four past him it's crazy but marner scores nylander scores mckayev scores in regulation the lead kind of flipped back and forth it was going back and forth it ended up three three going to overtime 3-3 three, three going to overtime so both teams get a point we're in overtime and the Leafs are hemmed in their zone and it's not looking good Riley stick gets slashed he's calling for a penalty he skates to the bench to grab a new stick it's just Matthews and Marner in their own and Freddie yes. hanging hanging by a thread in their own end I'm three on this, two three I'm on think, two I'm thinking this is over They're, this is over and then all of a sudden saved by the stash <laughs> Stash. So the three on two, Winnipeg's got them. They've got them cornered. There's nothing they can do. This looks puck's like it's a, look, that looks like it's over. It's over. No, I don't I'm think f- so. I'm flipping my furniture. It's fucking <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, Riley, who took a long fucking time to get a stick. Yeah, he didn't even come back in the play. The, the Marner ended up getting the puck yeah. out, and Riley kind of found it around the bench. And Riley's still calling for a penalty at this time. I know. He spent the whole time skating up, yelling at the ref. So the, the puck popped loose, gets to Riley. He goes down the wing. He looks over his right shoulder. And then everything just went to, like, slow motion. And it was, like, mad. He just sees happened. mustache flying down the wing. He slides the puck over and mustache thinks to himself. Nylander went backhand. Angvel went ba- backhand. Hyman went backhand. And they're couldn't over three. It. They couldn't get it done. But what's one thing they couldn't do? They couldn't get it up. Could not get it up. Couldn't I'll get show it. You. Couldn't you get boys, it hard. Couldn't get it up. It I'll was show you how so- to get it. It was it. always soft and low. Soft and low. Soft, soft and flat. Soft, soft and flat. And flat. And low. Mustache goes hard and high. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right at the top. He, he gets it up and hard. He gets it up nice and hard. Look, what a move, man. Look, Riley gets it over to Matthews, and Mustache comes in on hell. He does a little kind of uh, deke of the defenseman there, he, or whoever he shows, the man He back shows with. shot, and oh. Hellebuck freezes because Hellebuck's like, this guy's got one of the best shots in the league. And then yeah, as soon as Hellebuck freezes, Matthews like, this I get it up and bing hard. bang boom with the backhand of all backhands to win it in overtime for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And here we are with an epic mustache goal. Saved by the stash. Saved again. by the stash again. We are saved by the mustache. <laughs> we are saved by the stash. Brazzer style. And again. we will get to we will get to that later. Before we go to game three. I thought the Leafs played really well on Thursday. They played fairly well on Tuesday. They played – no, they played really good both games. They played good both games. So, in my opinion – Shot they, attempts in both games were like 70 to 30 for the Leafs. Like, they okay. always had the puck. 
They just couldn't beat fucking Connor Hellebuck. Yeah, and I, I, Freddie, I don't. Yeah, Fre- yeah. Freddie had a, some two on ones and and some tips off the skate. Hellebuck outplayed Freddie Anderson. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Down. Without a doubt. You like, switch, I, you switch goalies. You put Anderson in the other net and Hellebuck in the Leafs net. Leafs win those two games in regulation. No problem. Yeah, and I thought they should have won both of those games. They didn't, however. So the first two games, because the extra point, they split the games 1-1, but Winnipeg comes away with three points and the Leafs get two, heading into tonight's game. So here we go. The big Saturday night hockey night in Canada. Third game of the series. Winnipeg won 4-3, Leafs won 4-3. I was ready for tonight. I thought they were going to do it. Yeah, for sure. The way they were playing and coming off of that emotional win on on Thursday, holy hell, man! What the fuck happened tonight? Didn't fuck. And me. and and again, so we touched off off the top. No Connor Hellebuck either. They're playing Busset or whatever. They're playing their backup goalie, the Winnipeg Jets. Backup goalies in net. Goose scores in the first minute and a half. Gets called back, but at the same time, I know we joked that oh, this is means a loss because it's Goose. My actual thought was, all right, if they can do what they did on Tuesday and Thursday and get 35, 40 shots on this guy, they're going to score four or five goals. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought that, too. No, seriously. Like, without a doubt. I just thought with the – like, he lets in the first shot. I'm just like, okay. Like, and a couple of the goals he let in weren't – like, he should have had. I don't really know what happened here. Everything seemed to be, like, look trending towards – a Leafs victory tonight and they end up getting fucking spanked five, two, like what the fuck with their backup with the jets backup goalie in net, not a good fucking night for the Toronto no. Maple Leafs. Well, Winnipeg scored first, even though I felt like the Leafs had been the better team through the first period, Winnipeg scored first and it was one, nothing. But then within what? Five minutes. Muzzin scores shorthanded. Yeah, the least it's, first shorthanded goal of the season, Jake Muzzin. 1-1, one, one, and when you get a shorthanded goal, it really it really sparks the team. And then I thought they were flying. Nylander. So they were just, just sorry, before you go ahead, they were up 2-1. They did have a lead in this game. Yeah, Nylander scored, and it was 2-1. They got two goals within five, six minutes. And then late in the, in the second period, uh, Winnipeg got one that I think Freddie should have had. I didn't like the third goal. Like and, yeah, but this tied it at two two. So, but oh, we we end the second period. We end the second period. It's two two. Two two right? at the end of the second. That's right. So you're thinking, I didn't, okay. I, I didn't. I didn't love the third goal. I said all you got to do is win one period. You got to come out in the third period and just beat it. They got their backup goalie. If you out shoot them, if you out play them, you got this game. What a fucking shitty third. I don't know what happened during intermission, but the same team did not come out on the ice in the third period. No, I know, I know. Like Keith, you could tell every time they were they were panning to him on the bench, you could tell he could see his team falling apart before it even really started to show. Like he was nervous, man. He was pissed. He was angry. But we'll get to that later. Yeah. I don't know what happened, man. Third period. Yeah, I, I don't fucking know. Fell apart. Yeah. No, you're right. So the Jets scored to take the lead in the third period. I didn't love that goal, but not just on Freddie's fault again, or on Freddie here. Like I didn't like the defensive play and. Engvall was like did left his man on un, unco- uh uncovered too. So like there was a couple of things that led to that third goal. It wasn't, but I just didn't like the third goal in general. But uh and then so it's three two and the third's going on, and then you know, Riley takes the interference penalty like the puck's kind of i think somebody Ehlers flips it out or whatever, or somebody shifley, I can't, I don't know who it was, and like interference i guess the puck was kind of in the air riley looked like he was looking for the puck the winnipeg skater kind of just skated into him refs call it interference power play boom there you go right there uh goes from three two to four two and (laughs) And then they were checked out good night irene you could just tell that it's sunk right there it's like okay it's over fuck it's this this fucker's done but anyway so I, i a couple of bad calls like Anyway, it's 4-2 late in the game. There's four minutes Keith left. Keith is still trying. Even at 4-2, he's got the goalie pull. 4-2 with four minutes left. He pulls the goalie, and literally the puck is dropped and within right off the faceoff. Hyman takes a fucking another interference call. Yeah. And then Keith and a very, very borderline oh, interference. Fuck. I didn't even love the Riley call, to be honest. Like no. they, 
but so some some brutal calls in my opinion and then keith is just like fuck this like he gives well, keith you don't i don't see that you don't see that a lot in the last five minutes where they call soft calls like that yeah like, no. I get like he let them his, figure he, it out i get he had his arm around him but that's more like a first period first 10 minute type of call not five minutes with the goalie pulled like for the fans watching the game you want to see the six on five yeah, of course, man. Like if the Leafs if the Leafs score one within the, within the first minute to make it four three, game. then you then the yeah, of course you got a game. But the refs were like, no, we're not doing that. We're putting the Jets back on the power play, and this yeah. fucking puppy's over. Not no, only don't. that, Keith blows his fucking gasket, and I would have too. I would have been like, I would have done the exact same thing behind the bench. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? Seriously? Oh, Keith was. That was the most pissed. At, that's the most emotion I've seen out of Keefe. Ends up getting a bench minor to put them down five on three. And of course they score again, the Jets on the power play, make it five to two. And that's and all she wrote. With some brutal call. So three late penalties, all bullshit. If the first two didn't happen, Keefe wouldn't have taken the bench minor, but here we go. The refs, whatever. They the least didn't play well anyway, but uh you know, five two Jets final, brutal game in my opinion. The worst of the three by a fucking mile. The Toronto Maple Leafs didn't have it tonight, and I think they really blew an opportunity with having the Jets backup goalie in net. They shit the fucking bet on this one, man. Do you not think? Oh, like a thousand percent. Like I said, if they had played Tuesday and Thursday and got thirty five shots, they would have scored five goals tonight. But they just there was one shift. With the Kerfoot, Makayev, Engvall line out there, where they were in uh, Winnipeg zone for over a minute, and all they did was just drop pass to each other and cycle the puck. No one took a shot, and that was kind of the whole game. Like even the Matthews Marner line, it seemed like they were controlling it every time they were on the ice. And yeah, they took a couple shots here and there, but nothing. They had so many dangerous chances on Hellebuck. Like quality scoring chances. Oh my god! All, all, all over it. All they didn't all over have it. any tonight. No, they like didn't. hardly any. If they had have had those, they would have won the game. But they just, I don't know. I like they thought it was going to come easy or something. I have no idea. Never comes easy, boys. Come on, now. Never. You got to come hard, or don't bother coming at all. Come on. They didn't come at all tonight. They didn't even know coming tonight. But uh, so here it is to bow tie the Jets, the three game series against the Jets this week, which Leafs fans were very much looking forward to. Like, here we are playing with the big boys now. And to be fair, the Leafs did play well in the first two games. I think they shit the bed tonight. But to bow tie the week, the Winnipeg Jets take five of six points this week from the Toronto Maple Leafs and are now tied for second in the North Division with the Edmonton Oilers. After tonight, the Jets and the Oilers are now both tied for second in the North Division. Both teams four points behind the Leafs, who are now the Toronto Maple Leafs hanging by a fucking thread for top spot in the North Division. Four points, right. two, two teams right on them. Edmonton wins tonight. They're two points behind them. But the Leafs have gotten through a losing skid still in first place. Hanging by a thread, dude. They're hanging by a thread, but thing they should write the ship. Look, the Leafs have now lost four of their last five games, and they don't have a regulation win in their last five games. The only win they have in their last five games is that insane overtime goal by Mustache. So that's not good. They're still trending in – things were looking up after Thursday, but trending in the wrong direction. They get beat tomorrow night in Ottawa. Shit's going to hit the fucking fan. So – but here we are. Like if they and and going off of that, if they have a bad, but they're week, still in first place. Yeah, but they're hanging by a thread. If they I know, shit, but every if team's going to go. Bed, every team's going to go into a low. They've gone into a low. Yeah, where do we they go from how, here? Well, we don't know how long it's it's going to last. But my right. feeling is they will come out of this and, and they'll start and look, winning games again. And if they yeah. can do that, still in first place. You're okay. But yeah, in a 56 like, game season, this is the only low you can have. No, you're right. Like, and overall, I think they have played well. I did not think they played well tonight, but I have liked their game, even in some of the games they have lost. But, but look, whatever you got to win. It doesn't matter. You, you, you can they have a bad week this week. Okay. If, if they have a bad week next week coming up, they have four days off, but they have tomorrow night. Well, Sunday night, they have Ottawa and then they're off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then they've got a back to back against the flames next weekend, Friday and Saturday. But look, the truth is, is that, 
they have a bad week and they're going to be pushed out of first in their division and first overall in the NHL for the first time this season. They have a bad week this week and we are going to have a new team in first come next week at this time. There will be a new team in first in the North division. They can't have a bad week this week. But you can't you can't sit here and tell me that after watching Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or sorry, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, that Winnipeg is a world beater. Like the Winnipeg Jets did not strike me as this world beating, rolling through town, going to take over first place team. That team's due to go in the stinger again. If Hellebuck doesn't stand on his head, they don't get six points. No, you're so right. You said with Edmonton, you said this last podcast, and it was a great point. If Mike Smith didn't play as hard as he did, Edmonton wouldn't have went on that 6-0 and run or whatever it was. A great goalie does that. So, yeah, I think the Leafs will right the ship. I don't think Winnipeg's going to keep rolling through the league because I don't think Hellebuck can play like that all the time. And I think yeah. one guy yeah. on the Leafs, number 31, has got to play a li- just a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I would say. But let's um, get to that later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to do hot in the slot, hit the showers now and take a break? Or do you want to take a break and then come back and do that? Um, let's do hot in the slot now. Then we'll take a break and then we'll come back and we got more stuff to, to talk about. All that stuff that we said we were going to get to later. Oh, we're going to get to it. We're almost there. All right. Getting, it's time for hot in the slot. Or hit the motherfucking showers. <laughs> He's so hot right now. Oh, All right, God damn it, let's hit the showers, oh, God damn it. All right, Dale. Okay. Can this I go w- can, can I go first? Yeah, of course. Okay. Do you think we'll say the same person? I can't see how we don't. Hot in the slot this week without even taking a shot. <laughs> <laughs> no shots, three from, goals. No shots from the slot. Still hot in the slot. Oh, fuck, man. Number 34, yeah. Austin Mustache Matthews. Yep. Ditto. Without a doubt, man. Are you a kidding A dirty, no-look, behind-the-back <laughs> tip, a right-place, right-time little squeaker, and then probably the best goal of the season so far. Listen, folks, we're talking this week, Mustache. Bum wrist, still playing. Zero shots. <laughs> Three goals. <laughs> Okay, zero shots, three goals. That's how great this fucking cat. Well, the is. overtime was a shot. Uh, kind of. If you want to, technically, if, yeah, I guess it's a shot. It's a backhand shot, but uh, it's a shot. technically, technically, one shot, three goals. Yeah, I, we don't even have to really. We already spent all the time on Saved by the Stash, but let's get to hit the showers because I'm interested to see who you're going to pick this week. So I'll let you go first. Okay. Well, here's where I'm going to go with this. Uh, I'm kind I'm kind of breaking the rules as we go with these segments, but, uh, anyway, whatever it's our fucking podcast. So we'll do whatever the fuck we want. Right. Yeah. There are but, no uh, rules. We, <laughs> no. we make the fucking rules. <laughs> That's right. So here's where I'm going with hit the showers. Brazzers edition brought to you by Brazzers tonight. This very special edition of hit the showers. Actually, but I, I do have something Brazzers sent me a thing. They would like us to plug their new movie. Uh oh. So, well, uh, tonight's hot. Uh, tonight's <laughs> what segment are we doing? Hot in the slot, hit the showers. But tonight, we're hot, hot in the slot, hit the showers is brought to you by Office Hose and CEOs <laughs> by Brazzers.com. Nice. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm queuing it up right after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out online in your bathroom today. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. That's right. That's exactly right. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> All put, right. the, put the headphones in and away you go, away you go. <laughs> okay so <laughs> office hoes and ceos yes okay hit the showers okay here's a which is a, also a browser's flick well yeah wait yeah we're, we're we're working on a hot in the slot hit the showers full feature from browsers okay mm-hmm. tip in style <laughs> okay for me this week i'm not pinpointing I like their effort in the first two games. I'm not pinpointing any individual. I had a couple guys I was tossing around, but my ultimate conclusion for hit the showers this week is the entire fucking team that played tonight. The entire fucking team that played tonight hit the showers, boys. 
up and down the lineup, every single one of them from every single one of them, stars, non-stars, the whole roster of the Leafs Saturday night against the Jets hit in a 5-2 loss, hit the showers tonight. All of you, watch the soap, boys. People are going to hate me for this. Some people are going to love me for this. Is it Mario? No. Okay. Freddie Anderson needs to hit uh, the showers. There is no I like, re- Okay, there, okay, Chad. Listen, I liked his listen. game on Thursday. I liked his game on Thursday. I don't care. I don't care. But the I other two games. Eh. He gave up four goals on Tuesday, three goals on Thursday, and five goals tonight. Well, I know the shit at the end made it kind of crazy with the five on three. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You can't expect your team to constantly have to score four goals to win a game. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree with you, man. I can't remember the last time Freddie Anderson stole a game. No, and, and I can remember right. Campbell doing it. Yeah, you're, you're oh yeah. You're, I can course, remember man. Hutch shutting out the Oilers. That six one win against Edmonton. He had a six goal cushion. In Winnipeg's win on Tuesday, even though Hellebuck stood on his head, he still let in three goals. He just happened to let in one less than Freddie Anderson. Right, in the, but, in the, in but, the, in, the lo- in the loss in their loss on Thursday, but who had who had still the big, let in three goals? Who had the bigger load? Oh, who had the bigger on. load shot at them on Tuesday? Dude, come on. We all know who had the huge load this week. Hellebuck. 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 Hell of a load for Hellebuck this Hellebuck week. Hellebuck had Holy loads shit. coming at him left, right, and center. That's probably why he didn't play tonight. Yeah, he just he needed he a break. He was out. He was out. He had nothing left. Freddie had just – he just didn't have the same load shot at him, but he still let in the same amount of goals, more goals. So – yeah. All right. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that I, one. I love Freddie and I know he can bounce back and he goes through these ups and downs where he looks like a Vesna candidate. And then he looks like a guy you want to trade. Yeah. Fair man. Hey, look, dude, technically I had Freddie Anderson too, because I put them all in the showers tonight. Right. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> We're, we probably won't, but <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> anyway, let's take a break. Have a word from our sponsor. We come back. All that stuff that we were going to get to later, well, we're going to get to it later. You're listening to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. Hi, I'm Roger Horton, here to talk about Horton Pharmaceuticals' new compressed powder capsule for the treatment of erectile dysfunction, which is fancy doctor talk for when your penis doesn't harden, even though you went to a lot of effort to try and get it to. Impotence is characterized by the inability to develop and maintain an erection, most commonly impacting men over 75 years old. Sildenafil was invented to treat heart problems, but scientists quickly realized it had the unexpected side effect of creating almost unstoppable erections. So now we sell it exclusively for that purpose. Its effects on the heart remain a mystery. Again, it's a drug that forces you to have erections that are less sensitive than natural erections and could potentially last so long it becomes a medical emergency but most men prefer them to not having erections at all. I'm Roger, by the way, and I endorse, but do not personally need this product. And we're back. Uh, One thing before we move on, just going back to hit the showers. Freddie Anderson, I read this on the break. Uh Uh-oh. Groin, don't say it. No, no, not groin. He said himself... First of all, one of Keith's quotes was, we couldn't fucking string together two passes tonight, which is pretty pretty much sums up how they played. Yeah. Freddie, Freddie admitted he wasn't good enough. And then his save percentage has been 890 since returning from his injury. That That's not good. No, it's You've not. You've got to be over 900. You have to be over 900. Okay, so uh, you know what? Just since you brought that up out of the break, I'll just – I wasn't going to go here, but I'm, I, I will now because it, it just it, – you, you made me think of it. You know what? They're – they got four days off after tomorrow. You, why, why don't you play Fred again tomorrow night? Get his confidence back? Why not? You're playing – You're. Play, you, I don't think there's any need to play Hutch tomorrow night. Unless you feel like you have a better chance to win with Hutch and Net, which is if we're fucking there, we're in serious fucking trouble. But yeah, like, but you know what? I, I just thought Hutch is definitely playing tomorrow night, but you're right. 
You they have four play, days off Friday. They, they don't play again until Friday. So why wouldn't you just play Friday? And they're, dude, they're going to Ottawa. They'll be there in half an hour from now, probably. Like how long is a flight to fucking Ottawa? An hour? Not long. I like, flew to I, Ottawa one time and honest to God, you get up in the air. You know how you have to wear your seatbelt until the plane levels off? Yeah. You pull your seatbelt on, the plane goes flat. They gave me a muffin and an orange juice. Yeah, and you were I, there. I unbuckled my seatbelt, was going to go take a piss, and then the light came on. Buckle your seatbelt. We're descending into Ottawa. It is literally it's like, like a four or five hour drive. Like, it's 45 minutes in a plane. Yeah, so they're like less than an hour. So they'll be there within a half hour, 45 minutes. He'll be in, he can be in bed by 12 or 1230 if he wants, probably. So yeah. why not? Unless he's, having, more? unless he's having groin trouble. Well, yeah, it takes might a little have longer a, to fall asleep. Might have a little groin action. Whatever. You're in bed by one. Who cares? Like, whatever. Like, get some fucking sleep and you what? We'll I see what's it. up. Play, play him tomorrow night. So, holy hell, man. Then all of a sudden they're playing two games after tomorrow. They're playing two games in 10 days. If you're Kyle Dubas and a player has to quarantine for 14 days before joining your roster. Now would be the time to pull Now would be the time to pull the trigger because you only play, like, three games until if you pulled the trade tonight and the guy couldn't play till two weeks from today, you would only have, well, excluding the Ottawa game, you would only have three games in between that time. That would be a good time to make a trade. Yeah, of course it would. I think, yeah, you're right. Um, So anyway, yeah, like, I mean, we'll see what happens, but personally, so you say don't play Austin at all tomorrow night. No, I, I, now I've changed my mind now. Like with the wrist injury and him not shooting, like he still found a way to contribute this week, but not at the level that like we're used to really. Um, he doesn't, he, look, he just didn't he look, doesn't look like Austin. No, he doesn't look as dominant as he looked earlier in the season. Um, but still now, getting it done. Of course. Now that we're officially at the halfway point, I guess I would say like, because after tomorrow, they only have two games in the, in 10 days, play him tomorrow. So he gets one of the St. Pat's games, get the win over Ottawa. And then re- just let them rest for the next 10 fucking days straight. Do not play the back to back. No, does not play the Calgary series. Those two games. I don't know who I haven't looked that far ahead. I don't know who they have after that, but anyway, it's not important. It doesn't matter really, but 10, 10 days off 10 days. That's got to do. If they're, if he's playing with it, they're saying it'll heal while he's playing, whatever a 10 day stretch of just, he's not like, just let it heal. Let it fucking heal so that they can come back and really finish strong. Yeah. I don't know. It, That's it, where I'm at. It's Ottawa. Oh, okay. They well, play Ottawa it. tomorrow. Okay. Calgary Friday, Calgary Saturday, Ottawa Thursday. And then they start a uh, two-game series against the Oilers, and then it's right back to the Jets. Okay. So, okay, dude. So, so I guess this, this next couple of weeks is a really good time to do the things you have to do. Oh, like, absolutely. This is a great time. If you want to play the guys tomorrow, go ahead and play them. What about Thornton? Do you play Thornton tomorrow? Or you like Thornton take a week off? I don't know. I, I think you probably play them just because they have they do have four days off coming up. So I think you just play them tomorrow. If Thornton gets into the, one of the St. Pat's games. He's going to want to play. So I, I, would play, I would play Austin tomorrow. I would play Thornton tomorrow. But after tomorrow... I shut Austin down for 10 days. That's what I personally would do. 10 days stretch. Hopefully that will do it. And then come back and those bit those that Ottawa game and then boom, Edmonton and Winnipeg right after that. Those are probably those are the teams that are now right behind you that could possibly pass you this week, depending on how things go. Right. Well, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what we'll happens. See what, happens. What, what, what would you do? What would you do? Like we always say, the Leafs will get to it later. But what what would you do? It, like, what would you do with him? Play him tomorrow or not play him tomorrow and keep him out against Calgary or play him? Give uh, him the 10 days off or not? I would probably play him. I would probably play him tomorrow. And here's the thing. If they had won tonight, I wouldn't play Austin tomorrow. Sure. I was thinking the same I thing I wouldn't earlier. play Thornton tomorrow. I might not play Spezza tomorrow. Like I, if they had won tonight and built a cushion in first place, I would go into Ottawa and say Hutch is playing. Uh, Matthews is going to sit. It's a Sunday game. But but now they need. Gonna sit. But but now they need to win that fucking game. It's not even just about winning the game. They need to redeem themselves because this was a fucking shit show. Yeah. This was a fucking embarrassment tonight. No, but they they can't keep it going. Like they need to win that game. 
They yeah, need they, to win that game. Yeah, if they lose, if they don't get the two points in Ottawa, they're in big, big trouble. My, if they don't win tomorrow night in Ottawa, Monday night is or Monday morning, it's going to be a yeah. fucking shit show in Toronto. We're back to here we go again. Four or six We're, points here against we go Winnipeg, again. or five or six points, or six or six points against Winnipeg. No problem. You would see the fucking Marlies playing on Sunday. I would let anybody rest and say, see you Friday. I wouldn't even bring them to Ottawa. I would say, mustache, go back to your condo. 100%, man. But okay, not, so not going to happen now because you need the two points. Okay, so Dubas makes a minor deal uh, yesterday, and he trades Miko Letnin to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Goalie prospect, Finnish goalie prospect. Go ahead, pronounce that for me. I think I got it. All right, all right, here we go. Vianney Vivalainen. Whoa. It's pretty close. Holy fuck. That was right, I think. How would you you pronounce it? Well, I don't have it in front of me to read. Okay, so because I famous. have to, I have to read it. It's Vivalainen. Vivalainen. It's Vivalainen. not that hard. Vivalainen, not that hard. Of, and his first name is either Vienny or Venny. Vienny Vivalainen. I think we'll call him Vinny. Yeah, Vinny we'll, v- Vinny Vivalainen is what I like. Double we'll V. Him, du- double V. We'll call him. We'll call him <laughs> Vinny V. Yeah, Vinny V. That's right, Vinny V. Already Vinny a new v. fave. This is Dubas opening the window for Sandine. He Dubas knows that Sandine's ready. And the, and the thing with letting him was Dubas has this thing. He's done this before where I think he tells guys, if we don't play you, I will find a home for you. Yeah. And letting him wasn't getting into this lineup. And do you no. see him getting in the lineup barring injury? No, no. But my, but my, and that's the thing, like, is like, it would be nice to have him there, but like, maybe it would be better he to, was, you said like, a month ago, he was bitching and moaning about ice time. Yeah, he was. I, he, dude, hasn't I'm not played, gonna lie. he hasn't played since then. Look, I'm not going to. No, you're right. I'm not going to lie. Like, I had him penciled in as, like, he was going to be in their top six. Like, I thought he was going to replace Dermot, and it just hasn't gone that way. Didn't happen. Dermot. And that's cool. That's fine. Dermot's played well. So, yeah. what, whatever. But, like, so, so I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. He gets but, some sloppy V back. and Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I, like, he wasn't playing anyway. But yeah. I guess that will, you know, like, we'll see. Does Dubas make uh another move for a depth defenseman or you think it'll just be sand now it's sandine and lilligren are the next guys up or oh my god do we see marty morenz again oh my that, god shut your mouth well he, he's he's not fucking he's mouth. not far down the down the the pecking order now is he with letting out there no no don't say that don't hey, say that hutch came back <laughs> why the fuck not oh, i know oh god could you imagine could you imagine like Bogosian gets hurt and I don't know, Hall gets hurt. Oh, Fermat gets hurt. And you got Sandy and Lilligren, Marty Marinton, and then Anderson gets hurt. And you got Hutchinette. It's like last year all over again. But there's no, okay, you're, you're going to need, in my opinion, 8D, which is a hell of a lot of D. That's a That's hell a of a lot of D to go deep in the playoffs. You're, who, you're telling me when, if there's a series against the Jets. So you can't, or, or, you can't go deep with just 6D? Well, how do, how how do you not how <laughs> some of the D is going to get banged up? <laughs> We're going to have some banged up D. All right, so you got some banged up D. Well, that's the problem. That's why you're going to need some extra D. Okay, so you dip into the extra D. You need okay, but you have that Sandy and Lilligren. Okay, well that's what I'm saying. A D. If an injury, of, like in a tough playoff series or a tough playoff run. Where the How, D gets banged up. There's no way you're getting through in a, a long, deep playoff run with just six D. You're gonna need more. You're gonna need at least eight. At but least they have eight. If you count Sandy and Lilligren. Okay, so are those is, the next two up? Or okay, so after those rather, two, you would rather uh, like a sort of a grizzled veteran D. Like maybe that. like okay, no, actually, I'd rather Sandine. Say, let's see what the kids can do. I think exactly. they can contribute, but then after Sandine and Lilligren, guess who you got? You got Rosen and you got Marty Marantz. So, like those are the D's. Those are the big D's now. Those are the four D's waiting in the wings. I wouldn't say big D. Well, they're well Marty Marantz. Jeez. Anyway, so the only thing left is fucking Bieber's boner. Mm. It's the only thing I got left. Bieber's boner. Bieber's Leafs boner. Did you watch that video? Hey, Mr. Siva. Hey, Bono. Did you watch it? Yeah, it was great. It awesome was video. great. Oh, so well done. So well put together. Justin Bieber has a fucking boner 
for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Boner. <laughs> he loves it. And you know what? I don't even have anything else to say about it. I just know, like, it's but just I, it, I think I, I'll be perfectly honest. I've watched it probably three or four times. I only watched it once, but I probably will bring it up again. It's great. It's great. They were calling it like a love song. I don't even know what the, I don't even know what the name of the song is, but. The song's called Hold On. Hold On. Oh, Hold On. Yeah, that makes sense. Hold On. Hold on there. The song has nothing to do with hockey or the Leafs. No, I think it's just a montage video. He's just got a heart on for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Justin Bieber has a huge boner for the Leafs. Come on now. Love it. Yeah. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. And uh, maybe, maybe if we're lucky, we'll, we'll get to that later. (laughs) Have you, uh, have you been watching the players championship golf? No, I haven't, man. I haven't watched with, golf. with with the fans. I haven't the watched fans golf. are back. No, I haven't watched. Haven't watched. I saw like last weekend. Uh, what's his name? Fucking the Shambo just launch it over the fucking <laughs> like. Yeah, just went for it like like yeah. a beer league move, but actually pulled it off. Yeah, incredible. So they're in Florida. Florida had, doesn't give a shit about COVID. Fans are loud. No. It is the weirdest thing to watch, man. Like I've gotten so used to no fans. Yeah, it's fucking unreal. The guys yeah. hit the ball. The fans are getting the hole and cheering. It, yeah. Oh, it feels so good to watch. Yeah, and all I can crazy. think is, these games would be so. Do- that goal the other night when Mustache scored would have been so great with the oh my building. god. It's Everyone would have it, j- jumped to, out of their seat. I'm starting including to really Be- miss it. <laughs> including Bieber. Oh, Bieber Bieber Bieber. there. So. For the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast on YouTube at the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. Hit like, hit subscribe. Check out our website, www.tipinsportsmedia.com. Find everything to do with the podcast, everywhere to listen to it. Check out our YouTube clips. Follow us on Twitter at the Tip in Podcast and email us at the Tip in Podcast at gmail.com. We will be coming to you again. This week, at some point, we're not sure when, but the Leafs are going to play the Ottawa Senators tomorrow night. Then, they, uh, then they're home to Calgary Friday, Saturday. Then they don't play again until the following Thursday against Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. They're really uh, – and I said allowing fans, just before we go, allowing fans that they spa- – you know, allow fans and space it out. What I really meant to say was allow fans – and spread it out spread it out nice and wide just like our new friend of the show likes to do it Vinny v spread it nice and wide and there'll be no problem smooth sailing take it from Vinny v he knows what's up he knows a thing or two about (laughs) flying v oh you know just like our old two just like our old pal emilio for the tip in maple leaf podcast i'm chad I'm Wade Boggs. I'm Dale. I'm Vinny V, and we will catch you later. Have a good week, please. You got a big week this week. Come on. Keep the fucking sense. Come on, boys. Get out of the showers. Come on.